Welcome back to Sports on 7. I'm Tom Bushell. If you're on Twitter, you can catch me there. It's at Tom Bushell UAE. So it's a busy time for sport between now and Christmas. And it all starts this week with the Junior Swimming Championships. It all happens at the Handam Sports Complex. There's almost 800 competitors from over 90 countries are taking part. I've been there to talk to some of the key people involved to see what lies ahead. I started by speaking to Ruta Melatute, the London 2012 gold medalist and holder of world records in both the 50 metre and 100 metre breaststroke. Since she still is just 16, she is competing this week at the juniors. Well, Ruta, welcome to Dubai. It's your first time as well, so I have to ask, first impressions of not only the facility, but the city as well. Um, we haven't really seen much of the city. I've seen the airport and the hotel <laughs> so far, uh, but yeah, it's, it looks pretty amazing. You can tell it's really rich and all the buildings are so like, yeah. shiny. <laughs> it just looks yeah, so it's, good, it's, it? yeah, it's really good. And I, I'd love to see more of it. Maybe like the last day I could probably go out to town, but so far I've just seen the pool and the hotel and the airport. <laughs> In terms of that glittering career, of course, two world uh, records that you obtained in Barcelona earlier on this year. I mean, these kind of championships, you just want to continue breaking those records, I would assume. Um, I don't know. To be honest, it's just, uh, you know, it's all about improving myself uh, as an athlete and as a person. So, um, yeah, if I break a world record again, I'd be so happy. You know, but uh, for this meet, I'm just hoping to get some PBs and, you know, um, have fun. Of course, it's all about it. It's all about having fun. Uh, looking yeah. back on that gold medal in London, then, uh, as I say as well, Barcelona. Do the juniors now seem a little bit below your level, or do you still want to compete at this level and, 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 and beat everyone that you're competing against? <laughs> um, well, I think, yeah, it's still important, and I'm still a junior. And, um, I like being part of it, and if, if my participation here uh, you know, raises the profile of swimming, um, you know, not only in the world, but in, the, in Lithuania, and um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to do that. And yeah, it's, it's, it's still important to me. And um, obviously, you know, a world championship, senior level, and Olympics is, you know, is a lot bigger. But still, world championships for juniors is still a big event for me. Of course, everything is going so well, and with the success in London as well, I presume you mm -hmm. do have one eye on, of course, Rio in three years' time. Is is that another target to keep working towards? Yeah, definitely. Rio Olympics is the you know the biggest goal for me right now, and yeah, we're taking each year step by step. But yeah, the main goal is Rio Olympics. Fantastic. Thanks for talking to me. Thank Good you. luck this week. <laughs> Thank you. Andy. So a big week ahead for Ruta. Tickets for the event are just 20 dirhams per day or 80 dirhams for the week. I also spoke to Hessa Alkus from Dubai Sports Council and Vice Chairman of the Organising Committee who are keen to get more younger swimmers competing in the sport. This sport, um, for sure, it's uh, one of our focus uh, core sports within the Dubai Sports Council. Our strategy in, uh, is always to um, develop sport and encourage the communities to get more involved in sports. And especially this type of event that is targeting the youth, um, this is something that we're very much excited for. And especially uh, with the upcoming competition, exciting, uh, exciting swimmers coming to Dubai, so we're very excited for it. There seems to be such an emphasis on creating that passion at the younger levels in sport in the UAE. We have the under-17 FIFA World Cup coming up and now the Junior Swimming Championships as well. That is really where Dubai sees they can get into, if they can get sport uh, kids playing sport early on, then that's only good for the country. For sure, I mean definitely. The, the youth is, um, you know, the next generation and then that's who we need to start, um, you know, targeting and uh, encouraging them to get more involved. And uh, with all the programs and initiatives that we have coming up within the next uh, few years, and all the other events that we've been targeting, different sports and, and new popular sports, but also unpopular sports, trying to get the, um, the uh, new athletes involved and sort of uh, pushing them into the Olympics, uh, inshallah, in the future. So for sure, it's something that we're very excited about. There's so many uh, athletes competing in the next week here for the Junior Swimming Championships. When you last hosted the event uh, three years ago, did you expect to see this kind of growth and do you expect to see more growth in the future? Um, again, you know, our expectations were, um, you know, not not as not as much as we expected this this uh, event, but definitely going in the future, we're looking for forward to many more events, having many more athletes take uh, take part in it, and uh, inshallah, we grow our own uh, national team and get more uh, children involved with us too. So yeah, for sure. Thank you very much. For your time. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you.
For FINA, they see Dubai as a key venue for their swimming tours around the world. How important is Dubai to FINA these days because there's so many big swimming events that happen here? Mm -hmm. Well, D D Dubai has, as I said in the press conference, one of the best facilities in the world for swimming. Uh, this is a magnificent facility and uh, the opportunity for athletes to come and, and compete is a, is a big opportunity for the athletes themselves and for FINA. Dubai had such a big passion when it comes to the sport of being in the pool and, and diving as well. Does FINA share that passion to be here in the Middle East? Oh, absolutely. Uh, the, the sport of swimming keeps growing with more interest all over the world. And when we can come to an area such as Dubai and encourage the development of the sport, it's a very big thing. And also, just one more from me as well, in terms of records and, and your hopes to see in the next week, what would you expect from the competitors over the next few days? Mm -hmm. I expect that we will see a lot of competition records, junior world event records, um, because it is a relatively new event. This is the fourth time, and each time it has been a little faster and more participants. So I would expect we will see many records this week. Now, the FIFA Under-17 World Cup is soon to kick off in the UAE. The best Under-17 international sides from around the world will be competing across six venues in the UAE. Uh, matches will be played in Dubai, Abu Dhabi, Fajera, Ras Al Khaimah, Sharjah and Alain. The likes of Brazil, Argentina, Italy, Sweden and of course the UAE have all qualified. The UAE, of course, as host nation. Enarki Alvarez, FIFA's Deputy Director of Competitions, has been talking to me about how the UAE's preparations are coming along, how many worldwide viewers of FIFA are expecting and why the UAE is such a good tournament host. Anarchy, thanks so much for joining me for a quick chat. Obviously, exciting times ahead of the FIFA Under-17 World Cup happening in the UAE. Just tell me how preparations are going at the moment. Obviously, not long to wait until the uh, big kickoff. Oh, you're right. We're in the final countdown, 50 some days, 55 days before kickoff. A lot going on, still a lot to do. We have, of course, the official draw coming up on the 26th of August. And then we'll find out who is playing where. And uh, so it's very exciting. How have you seen the, the UAE progress since they were named the host country for this tournament? How have you seen in their world of football progress all the time? Well, from an event delivery point of view, which is what I'm here for, uh, we have been working for many months now in uh, the stadiums and uh, infrastructure, whether that be uh, dressing rooms and, and power generation to transportation and so on. So there's a lot of items that we've been working on. And so this has been, this will be what I'm doing now is the last visits before the draw. We'll have one more complete set of visits before kickoff. The primary goals of this round of uh, visits has been the confirmed of the finish of the infrastructure projects, dressing rooms and so on. And then we start to focus on getting the people more organized, more coordinated. And how do you compare the UAE's facilities when it comes to stadiums and, and the likes of compared to other host countries around the world? How does the UAE compare? I mean, you don't necessarily need to compare. Uh, UAE, UAE has to stand on its own. Um, it, there's no, there's no uh, need to compare it to any other country. We need to get the best out of UAE, infrastructure as well as people, and that's what we're here for, yeah. Obviously, in any World Cup at any level, there's a, a big TV audience. And what kind of figures can we expect ahead of the Under-17 World Cup here in the UAE? Obviously, many countries around the world competing, and, and they'll be watching on TV as well. Definitely. What I'm hearing is that uh, just, uh, just shy of 200 uh, countries have already signed up uh, to get the signal, to get the, uh, to get the matches on TV, and that's actually a record as far as I'm concerned. So it's a big audience, big worldwide audience. And in terms of after this World Cup, how would you like to see the UAE progress in their sport of football? And, and would you like to see the stadiums get bigger and bigger all the time? Or is it more of a case of seeing more people playing the sport in the country? Yeah, I don't think we necessarily want to have bigger stadiums. We have to have what's appropriate for UAE, for the local circumstances. 
but definitely football can always improve. It doesn't matter how mature your football is, there's always room for improvement. In terms of the UAE, there's a big passion, of course, for the sport here, isn't there? And obviously that's uh, good to see in the UAE in good form ahead of the World Cup as well. Yes, there's a lot of passion here for football and we're hoping to infect or affect uh, the, the younger players, the teenagers, in the same age group as this World Cup. We're hoping to get, their, get them excited about seeing players just like them from all over the world, the best ones, where many of the current stars all came through the under-17, and why not them? And of course, this World Cup's happening in October and November when mm -hmm. the climate will be perfect here in the UAE. Do you feel that's a good point to stage a World Cup in the Middle East because it is a little bit cooler? I'm not making any inferences to any other uh, events, but definitely, yes, for this particular situation, October, November is better. Actually, back in 2003, when UAE hosted the Under-20 World Cup, it was also in the October, November time frame. So for here, it makes sense, yes. Just one more from me. Are you quite surprised to see the likes of England at under-17 level, Spain as well, of course, world and European champions at the moment, not competing at this tournament? Is that quite surprising? Maybe from, uh, from the name's uh, point of view, but uh, that's the beauty of football, you know, so any given day, any given game, anybody can win. And uh, so we have the best 24 teams here right now at this time. So this is, this is, uh, this is just the way football is. Yeah. Anarchy, uh, pleasure talking to you. Thanks for your time. You're welcome. Thank you. Kickoff for the FIFA Under-17 World Cup is on October the 17th, uh, with the final being played on November the 8th in Abu Dhabi. That's it for part two of Sport on 7. Uh, we'll be back next with Chris McCarty as we chat sport over the last seven days. Back after this.